Everyone wants to look a little better. Maybe you just want to shed a few pounds, hit the gym, try a new hairstyle, maybe switch up your wardrobe. Everyone just wants to look good. But how far are you willing to take it? How far would you go to look as good as you possibly can? Are you willing to take the black pill? James Sapphire is the epitome of everything that could go wrong with male self-improvement and looks maxing. Not only did this at the time 14-year-old child ironically lose any normality he had to his appearance in the attempts to look as good as possible, but also completely lost his sanity along the way. From permanently destroying his face with surgery to getting addicted to various types of drugs and even eating his own feces and drinking his own own urine. James Sapphire is someone who has lost everything to the black pill. With his notorious lolcow status across all depths of the internet, coupled with the fact that he has not only destroyed his appearance, but destroyed any chance of him ever having a normal life again, serves as a cautionary tale of just how dangerous taking the black pill can be. Something I should preface before starting this video is that James is a pretty huge troll, and it's hard to decipher what is embellished and what is true about him. I've done quite a bit of research for this video and have spoken with many people who are or were close to James at different points of his life, so I feel like I've got a good account of what his story is, but it gets pretty convoluted at points, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Also, James is extremely racist and misogynistic, so any slurs or hateful rhetoric shown in any of the screenshots I've taken of posts James has made, I just want to make clear I do not stand by, and if stuff like this is triggering to you, especially the n-word that seems to be a favorite of James, I would recommend clicking off the video. James Sapphire, also known as Curly Head James, was born in Dallas, Texas between the years of 2003 and 2005. James had a pretty rough childhood, with his father dying in the military before he was born, and his mother being an adult film star as well as a drug addict. While it seems he has been in contact with his birth mother at certain points in his life, he claims he wants nothing to do with her, disgusted by her line of work, specializing in some pretty vulgar fetish stuff. And you can't really blame James for this, she definitely does not seem to be in a solid headspace much of the time from drugs and other mental illness problems problems often leave an incoherent rants across a lot of James's social media accounts. It even seems although she was homeless for at least a period of time as James shared a clip of her on the news when on a podcast. Find ways to relocate the homeless. I haven't heard. There she is, that's my mom. Right there, okay, yeah, that looks like the woman. Says she's been homeless for eight months, despite what the airport says about trying to relocate the homeless. Says nobody has talked to her about moving. No. In fact, she says the airport seems to welcome them. I'm grateful to the police for letting us come out here and stuff. It's unclear on if his mother is still homeless now or even still alive. James is emancipated and he claims although his mother lost custody of him in 2013, which was when James was roughly about seven. So through most of James' childhood, he grew up being raised by his extended family in the Dallas, Texas surrounding area. It could also be that James is lying about this being his mother, which would make a lot more sense, although from the research I've done, I'm actually more inclined to believe that this is his actual birth mother. I'm not going to get into detail for confidentiality reasons, but from speaking to people around James and public records, this does seem to actually be his real birth mother. But despite his bad circumstances, James was a pretty normal kid for much of his childhood. He played sports, had friends, and was pretty popular among his peers. He even had girls from his school texting him on Snapchat and received numerous compliments on his then youthful appearance. And one time, a girl who was interested in James as a compliment called him a pretty boy, and little did either of them know that this singular comment would come to ruin James Sapphire's life forever. 
Not knowing what a pretty boy was, a 14 year old James Sapphire googled it just to see what it meant where a picture of Chico came up on a website called looksmax.org. Now for those unaware, looksmax is a website and forum dedicated to mostly men trying to max out how good they can genetically appear for the opposite sex. In recent years, it's become a much more known and talked about topic to which a lot of people actually seem to credit James Sapphire for popularizing. And on paper, looks maxing doesn't sound like anything too bad. The idea of looking as good as you can isn't inherently a bad thing. But it's the site's users that make this extremely toxic. Frequently telling people of whom they refer to as having bad genetics that they will never find love and even encourage them to themselves, all because they don't look a certain way. A forum like this can be extremely dangerous to a malleable adolescence and James Sapphire has become the poster child for this. After initially discovering the site on accident, James began to frequently post himself across the forum where people began to brainwash him into believing he would never be successful in the dating world unless he received various different cosmetic surgeries and fillers, telling him he needed more chin projection, bigger lips, less face fat, and a bunch of other ways in which his appearance was lacking, and eventually James began to actually start believing them. Even though at the time, girls were still hitting him up on Snapchat, even inviting him to multiple different parties after discovering the forum, this was not enough for James. He then posted his eyes in a private chat on the site and was told his eye area was utter dog and he would never find love unless he got UE filler, canthoplasty, and orbital implants. James was taken aback by this. Girls had always complimented him on his eyes, but now he was being told he needed surgery by people he trusted, so he became more and more depressed. He felt totally insecure about his appearance and vowed to do anything he could to change it. This was the last video James claims was taken of him before he went completely off the rails and everyone in his city began to hate him. Since James was pretty popular, this video proceeded to go viral at James' school and everyone began to bully him. Any friends he had prior and any girls who were talking to him completely did away with him and he became seen as easy bait at his school. People would come threaten him with baseball bats, take his jewelry, make him pay for protection. He claims he basically became public enemy number one in his city. So this is where James decided to drop out of school using what little money he had to buy more surgery, as well as having bought HGH. AIs and MK677, which for those who don't know are steroids. James is still to this day super vengeful of the people who bullied him in high school, frequently posting about how much he hates them and how he can't wait to one day get revenge on all of them for whatever that might mean. James seems to be pretty self-aware of his situation. He himself even claims to have lost everything to this forum. From taking the advice from incels on looksmax.org, he slowly started to become one himself and lost everything in the process. James losing everything and completely regretting the surgeries he had done to his face says in a post, if I would have known what taking such strong responsibility and having this powerful information would do to me, I would have ignored it and lived ignorantly in bliss. But little did he know that this would only be the tip of the iceberg for just how low his life could get. Now, the timeline for James Sapphire's social media side of his story is a little convoluted, and my timeline might not be exactly perfect, but I do think this is the most interesting part of the James Sapphire story, so I'm going to try my best to get this side of his journey coherent. It seems after dropping out with no education or real way to make money, this is where James Sapphire began to try to take becoming an internet personality more seriously. He did initially go out and get a regular job at the dollar store to make some money for himself so he could buy more surgery, candy, etc. But James would only work there for about five months before quitting as he described actually working a regular job for a living as slave labor and he also wasn't very enthusiastic about many of his African American co-workers. James vowed he would never work a normal job again and began to put more focus into what he was doing on social media. He had been doing TikTok
TikTok and Instagram stuff up until that point, but never really took it too seriously. James Sapphire stated himself on his looks maxing account. If you people had a song and lore with potential, you would take it. It's not my fault as well. I fell into a friend group of a bunch of TikTokers who I will not name who persuaded me to promote this stuff. Besides, normies see it as a joke. But as James said, people were intrigued by his story and dissension into madness with me included, so he thought he would make a pivot into capitalizing on it. And to some degree, it worked. As I said earlier, he is the one who popularized this whole look smacking craze, as well as bone smashing, but that one's kind of weird. I'll get into that one later. James continued to post more and more to his TikTok and began to amass a relatively small but very loyal following. Then in 2021, he would branch out to other platforms like Instagram and Snapchat, and this is about the time I found out about him, even though I wish I didn't. Here are some screenshots of the stuff he used to post on his stories back in the day. Just extremely racist, misogynistic, incel rants that he would post very frequently, sometimes even like 20 times a day on both his respective stories. James also seems to have a huge disdain to showering or really any practice of hygiene, which he frequently ranted about as well on his social media. Here's maybe my favorite post James has ever made on his looks maxing account, which reads as following. I haven't showered in eight months. Don't brush my teeth. Eat my poop. Boogers. Drink urine. Don't wipe. Don't clean my penis after I jerk off 10 times a day. Sit in my room all day naked playing Roblox. I don't shave or clean my fingernails and toenails. Don't cut them. Plus, I have lice. While you have to take showers and do everything, I don't. Oh yeah, James also seems to have a huge affinity for trans women, expressing his attraction towards them many times on his looks maxing profile, claiming that trans women have not wronged him in the same way that real women have, so he therefore doesn't hold any grudges against them, as he does with women born female at birth. He is such an incel that it literally turns him into being LGBTQ. Some people would probably say this is trolling, which, fair, but I feel like there's at least something to this. The posts seem to come from a pretty genuine place of attraction, but who knows. This is also roughly about the time that James ate his own feces and drank his own urine on camera. Yo, what's up guys? You see it's on my finger. I'm gonna send, uh, I'm gonna send the video to my story very soon once I eat it. Low key, it does not look too bad. This is pretty obviously fake, but just goes to show the type of stuff he would post on his social media at the time. If he was ever going to try to take this seriously, he was going about it in the completely wrong direction. Or maybe not, I mean, I'm talking about it right now, so hey, maybe this was a good decision since he was already not taken very seriously at the time, and this was probably just another attempt at him going viral. But either way, James was only able to keep his Snapchat and original Instagram up for another few months before getting banned due to the type of content he posted, but that was okay, because luckily for James, he had an ace up his sleeve. James subsequently decided this is where he would start to drop some music. He seems to have had a love of music since his childhood, there's even videos of him playing guitar in his school talent show, so this seemed like a logical next step for his social media endeavors. Now, James's trajectory and sound throughout his music career is very diverse, going through multiple different distinct phases in his musical journey. The first of which is a pitched up pop star motif. His first few songs sounded like they could be on the Disney Channel or like a kids bop playlist. The most popular song from this era is called Together, which also got turned into a meme sound on TikTok. My girl, she's my wonderful world. Every game she plays in a spark of flame. My girl's wearing those expensive pearls. She'll be taking my last name. I honestly don't know what James was thinking when he was making this. I couldn't imagine anyone ever actually listening to this outside of a meme, so maybe that's what he was going for. But luckily for us, this era of James didn't last long as he pretty quickly changed his sound from Disney pop to hyper pop. James demonstrated this change on what would be his most popular feature ever and second biggest song he's ever been on, Y2K by Party Like 2000s. <laughs> I'm not 
gonna lie, as someone who used to be a big Hyperpop fan, I actually kinda like this song and used to listen to it at the gym. But as James was making music, he continued to troll on social media, often making himself the butt of the jokes in his TikToks, and kind of embraced his overall living meme status he carved out for himself at that point. During this period, James actually seemed to be doing alright for a while. That is, until eventually everything took a turn for the worst. This is what I'm going to dub the Rockstar era of James Sapphire. Between his music, drug use, and deteriorating mental health, I think this is a good title. This era kicks off with arguably James' most notable achievement to date, founding and popularizing a new subset of looks maxing called Bone Smashing. Now before I go into detail on what bone smashing is, I just want to say I do not endorse or encourage anyone at home to try bone smashing. This is an extremely dangerous endeavor that can more or less be chalked up to pure pseudoscience, so keep that in mind. But bone smashing is where you lightly hit your face with a hammer or some hard object to slowly refine your face into having a more chiseled structure. Eventually, from repeated light blunt force trauma, the bones start to grow and mold themselves into having a more desired shape. Some studies say that it can actually be successful in refining face shape, if done properly, but others claim it to just be a fictitious internet trend with no real facts behind it. I'm more inclined to believe the latter on this one, but to each their own. Either way, James Sapphire is credited for starting and popularizing this trend, and it even landed him an interview with Know Your Meme, a pretty sizable website and internet culture hub. The interview is basically just asking James some questions about bone smashing, like what it is and if it works, where James speaks on his experience with doing it for what he claims has been two years at that point. I'll link the full interview in the description if you want to read it in its entirety, but there is one excerpt from it that I think is pretty damning and shows James opening up a bit about his mental health. To the question, do you regret bone smashing, James Sapphire responds as saying, I have a ton of regrets in life. Bone smashing is a cult for me, a safe space, even if it is just a placebo. Each time I pick up that hammer, I feel empowered with each hit. I know I will achieve my goal. All the times I was beat up at school, approached once by the baseball team who had bats threatening to kill me, thrown into bathrooms and scuffed up and bullied, each hit I've had to endure from normies is represented by my smashes and not only is it an emotional scar but it is now a physical scar shown visibly on my face bone smashing seems to be more than just a way to look better for james it's a tool he uses to forget the outside world and sedate his mind into only concentrating on forming a better face structure instead of dealing with the many problems he has in his life I truly do feel really bad for James when hearing stuff like this, but sadly for him, this interview proved to do nothing but worsen his situation because after this interview with Know Your Meme, James would subsequently get doxxed as well as swatted. See, while James does have a lot of fans, with him being a huge internet troll and lolcow, he has just as many, if not more, haters. As you saw by many of the screenshots I've used, he isn't exactly the nicest guy on the internet, and he's been notoriously known to go into voice chats on Discord just to talk shit and troll people. So all the trolling he's done through the years seem to actually catch up to him in real time with him having to face real life consequences due to his actions over the internet. But it wasn't all bad for James as here he would have a short victory at least as far as his music career went. This is where James made his most popular single to date called Black Pill Curse which gained a lot of traction on TikTok yet again especially in looks maxing posts. This song sits at having well over a million streams on Spotify and just under 300,000 views on YouTube as of this recording. Which is definitely nothing to scoff at, these are some pretty notable numbers which shows despite his bad reputation he does have a genuine fan base. Here's a clip of the song itself. This song I've actually had stuck in my head all throughout the process of making this video. If the 
lyrics weren't so tied to the black pill, I would even call this a good song, which seems to be a pretty common sentiment held by many fans of his as well, but James seems to not really care and wants to embrace his black pill identity farther. But aside from his music, this is easily the darkest period of James life. As any success or money he'd make from his music or his social media profiles would go directly into fueling his budding drug addiction. See, one thing I didn't mention is that all throughout 2022 and much of 2023, James Sapphire had been heavily using substances such as methamphetamine, cocaine, and codeine promethazine syrup, also known as lean. So much so that James was even sent to a mandatory state-induced rehab in late 2023. He seems to have gone through long bouts of drug-induced psychosis, as well as just a general loss of reality, which is backed up by the very strange delirious post he would make during this time period, as well as the downright bizarre songs and style of editing he put out during his time of hard drug use. He claims he was a daily user at that point, sinking further and further into a deeper and deeper depression, all leading to James eventually overdosing on methamphetamine with him nearly dying, then being forced into a rehab facility. This was the complete rock bottom for James. By this point, his drug problem had completely spiraled out of control. And between him dropping out of high school and the fact that he could never get a normal job because one Google search of his name would prevent anyone from ever hiring him, James Sapphire felt like he had completely ruined his entire life, and to much degree, he most certainly did. He may never be able to fully recover from his past mistakes and will probably go to the grave with his face still mangled by plastic surgery, but at the very least, it does seem as of late he is taking the right steps towards putting his life back together. He's actively seeing multiple different therapists to deal with his past trauma and has gotten completely sober from hard drugs, now only using marijuana. And while James still doesn't seem to be interested in working a normal job, he seems to be coasting frugally off government assistance and food stamps. James says in a post that he gets $1,200 a month from military disability due to his deceased father and relies on food stamps for his basic necessities, getting a bit of money from his music as well as other in-person side hustles to keep him afloat, only really ever leaving his apartment to go to therapy or to get groceries. It isn't exactly a very ideal situation, kind of just coasting off government assistance, but it still is a big step up for how his life was going previously. Also, as of recently, James has gotten completely off social media, deleting all his Instagram posts and removing much of the videos on his YouTube channel, which I think is the right move for James. Social media has done nothing but harm to James throughout his life, so him taking the initiative to consciously remove himself from his online identity is the only way I see James ever really recovering. While James is now stepping away from the black pill, it's not the same James as he was before. He said multiple times that his internet personality was not a persona and was just a mirror of how he was really feeling at the time. And now, with everything said and done, he's left with many regrets and trauma from a life of unsupervised internet usage that led him to where he is today. I want to end this segment with a quote from James himself that I feel really encapsulates the fallout of his story well. They took everything from us, took our depression, turned it into a joke, we got nothing out of it. Now I'm left rotting in despair while they get to move on with their lives. I am only now just starting to pick up the pieces and finally get my life back together after being on hiatus my entire teenage years. They all took advantage of me during my emotional distress and high out of my mind on crystal meth coercing me into doing things I not only regret looking back on, but things that will severely impact my future for the rest of my life. I will never forgive or forget the ones who did this to me. What I hope everyone can take away from this video is that you should be very careful on what you post and view online. The internet never forgets, and a post you make today can and will be used to haunt you down the road. Be mindful of what you are doing on here. Any toxic fringe internet circle such as the black pill should be avoided at all costs. It will do nothing but ruin your mind and further dampen your spirit. It's most likely too late for James Sapphire, but it is most certainly not too late for you. 
Please seriously stop and think before you engage with the internet, because if you don't, the consequences could be detrimental. But I hope you enjoyed the video, um, I know this really isn't like my typical upload, I've been trying to branch out from strictly doing like anime type content, so if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, being a smaller creator myself, it really does help out a ton. Um, other than that, you can go check out some of my other videos if you do like anime or anything of that nature, but yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys.